Hey guys, Captain C.A. Richardson here for Flats Class YouTube. And today, I want to do a little video for you on the Paul Brown Original. This is the old school Corky. And I'm going to catch a couple of trout out here. So I want you to follow along and I'm going to show you exactly how to work this bait, talk about some of its early beginnings, and really make you a big fan of something that looks pretty homemade. One of the things I love about this old school bait is other than the fact that it looks very homemade is it's got these little torpedo fins down here at the bottom of the bait and it gives it a killer gliding action. It also has a gigantic eye for a major target for a big speckled trout. But I do catch snook and I do catch redfish on this bait. Now when I work it, it actually subwalks about four to 10 inches underneath the surface depending upon how fast I make the twitches. Now, naturally, the shallower we are, the faster I have to twitch it. But ultimately, in the deeper zones, I just want to lift, lift a couple of times just to get it moving barely and let it glide as far as it can. So I think it's better when I'm fishing 18 inches of water rather than fishing less than a foot. But right now, it's a negative tide and I got to pick my, pick my poison. What I mean by pick your poison, right now, I'm trying to negotiate through this flat. And it is so shallow in here. There's a lot of the oyster bars are out, but there's so many of them that are down lower. And I'm just trying to go from one bowl to another. And I'm looking ahead to try to figure out how to, it's almost like a maze of oyster bars, but I do have a zone up here where I can see some heavier mullet activity where they're really jumping out of the water. So I, I'm pretty sure I have a foot or two of water there. And that's where this Paul Brown's going to be a lot more effective. So I'm going to make my way there and then we're going to set up with a micro anchor for power pole and then I'm going to work the pole brown through that zone to see if I can't catch us a nice trout. I want to catch you guys a big trout but I'm looking right now at this oyster bar that's up ahead of us about 50 yards and there's a giant, I mean a giant redfish tail just waving at one end of the bar and I bet there's a few more up there but that one is the one I want. I'm going to try to catch him. I'm going to give Cam a chance real quick to put the drone up and go take a look. And if he can't get to it, I'm going up there to catch him. got to be more than one and that one was well over 30 inches and it's super skinny here so I'm just trying to be patient the winds kind of turned around all of a sudden and maybe this wind will help me catch a fish not the biggest one but definitely one I'm gonna try for a lot bigger trout than this guy here Paul Brown, baby. Paul Brown. Guys, the way you work this bait is slow. Two good twitches, pause it so it can walk back and forth almost like a sub walk. So you're just pumping it twice, take a little slack down, pumping it twice, take a little slack down. And I'm working this in about two feet of water right now, catching trout. But you got to be patient with it. You want to leave a little slack so that thing can glide. If you don't let it glide, you're not going to catch a trout. But it's just that little pause, that little hesitation. I like to pump it twice and then wait. Usually they hit it on that stop. All of a sudden you'll just feel weight there and you'll have a trout. That's really as simple as it gets. Not a lot to it. More patience than anything else. Had one pop me there. Come on, he must not have been big enough. It's gotten a little bit breezy as soon as that wind turned on us. Clouds are coming across the state. Might have to move us up into the lee. Ooh, almost got one there. 
Come on. Big girl. We want a big girl. Sometimes I'll just hit it one time and let it settle. Just keep that cadence slow though. That's the main thing, slow. Give it time to get to some depth. Oh, man, tearing them up. I mean, just tearing them up today. Changed over to pink. And this one has just been scorching them. Just scorching them, another mustard mouth here. And you can see how delicate the mouth is on a trout. I mean, it's delicate. So you have to be so careful. And that's why those little fine wire hooks do such a good job. But these Paul Brown Originals, they're money for trout. So a little background about the Paul Brown lure. Very home style lure. Looks like it was made in someone's garage because it was. Paul Brown used to make these actually in his garage. There used to be stories of guys that were fishing tournaments in Texas that would wait at, in front of his house at four o'clock in the morning looking for the lights to come on so they could go knock on the door and buy these baits from Paul. It was like a cult-like following on these baits. Now, it's a real simple design, torpedo body, uh, lightweight hooks, the balance is perfect, and these things just kind of rock straight down when they fall in the, in the water column. But the idea is to pulse the bait, pause, pulse the bait, pause, and these long glides, these long walks, sub walk, if you will, is what really drives the trout crazy. Now, there are ways to tune this bait. You can bend because the inner wire in it, you can bend it so that the tail goes up, just like so. And what that does is in the water, it makes that bait ride up, almost like a banana. It'll just push it toward the surface and then it will fall slowly, corkscrew down and push it toward the surface. So it has a very wounded look. A lot of guys will bend the tail down a little bit and that way when you pulse it, it's diving more in a downward motion. But I like to try my best to keep it at a normal attitude because I'm typically fishing 12 to 18 inches of water with it most of the time. It acts almost like the old, um, a little wider walk than the 7M, but more like the Mirror Lure Catch 2000 does a good job. But when you're talking about baits that really drive trout nuts, this has got to be in your tackle bag. And with the rattles and with the wide variety of subtle colors, this bait really is the bait you want to catch your big trout on. It got a little chilly. We caught a few more trout. Just, I love sharing with you guys the lures for the seasonality that we're fishing. And that way you can you can use these as soon as you watch them on YouTube. And if you like what you're seeing here on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up. Share it with your fishing buddies. It's my job to make you a better fisherman. Until next time, Captain CA, signing off.